So over the last several years, I've been building up a business of a content creator, educator, online trainer, and many other things. And as part of that, I surround myself with tools that make my job easier, things that I use every single day to get the job done. So these are tools that I've tried and tested, and they are fully battle tested in my use cases. And I want to share those with you today. So I've got 12 tools that I absolutely love and use every single day. Actually, stick around to the end because I might have a bonus tool that I think you should check out, which is kind of new to my tool set but absolutely worth you checking out so without further ado let's take a look at the first tool that i highly recommend that i use every single day so what exactly am i talking about well i'm talking about brand bird now i have to give full credit to sunny over new pulse labs because he's the guy that actually turned me on to this particular tool and what exactly is it well simply said it's an online tool that allows you to integrate with your chrome browser and just simply grab whatever's on screen and make it look absolutely amazing. So let me quickly show you how easy it is to use this. So this is the website. This is the brand word website. Now you can use a free account and you can get some of the things done, but I've paid for this a year in advance because I use it every day and it just saves me so much time. Let's go ahead and open the studio. You can see this is basically my studio. So what I can do is I can go ahead and I can say I want to grab an image. So if I come back over to, for example, Twitter, I can come up to my icon at the top, I can click, and I have the option now to grab the visible screen, extract an element, highlight an element, or create an OG image. In this case, let's go for the visible screen. So that's going to grab exactly what you can see on screen right now. So I'm going to grab that. That's going to load that into the Brandbird app. And what it's going to do then is it's going to create a nice looking mock-up for me. Now I've got full control over this, the size, the shape of it, the actual position of it, backgrounds, colors, all those kinds of things. So let me just go ahead and make sure I'm signed in. So now I've got full access to all of the tools. Let's come over to the left hand side. You can see we've got brands, templates, images, position, background, and so much more inside you. It's incredibly easy and it is constantly being updated. I log in every couple of days and there's new features available to me. So it is a very, very rapidly developing application. So if I want to, I can come into one of the templates. I've got public templates, which are part of the whole Brandbird account or you've got the templates that you create and save. So it's very easy. So for example, I may want to use this template, that's mine. I can click on it and you can see, boom, it now pulls that into exactly what I laid out when I created it. If I want something different, for example, this angled one, I can click and you can see that now adjust the screen grab for me. I can come into things like the background and I can change that. You can see I've got a choice of things like gradients, solids, patterns, images, and so on. I can adjust the gradient. I can adjust the angle of the gradient. I can use a grid overlay if I want to give it a cool effect a conical gradient. I can go and choose from any of the predefined color layouts, turn things on and off, or I could come over and say I want to put a pattern inside there. I can choose patterns. There's an abundance of different options. If I want to create 3D, I can do that and I can adjust this based upon various different parameters, the intensity, the tilts across all the axis. I can come into different mockups and I can change this. So for example, I may want this to be in a new modern transparent browser effect. I can do that. I may want to have nothing at all. So it's very easy to use, has a ton of features and is updated constantly. So thank you, Sunny, for letting me know about this. And also thank you, Brandbird, for being absolutely awesome. Next on my list is a little tool called Post Haste. Now I create videos pretty much every single day and there's a very repetitive part of that. Creating the folder structure, creating the Final Cut profile, creating the graphics for the thumbnail, there's an abundance of different things that I've got to do every single time I create a video. And as you can imagine, that can get pretty labor intensive. Post Haste makes that whole process painless. Now I put Dave Foy onto this a little while back and he was absolutely blown away by just how cool this is. And don't think this is dedicated to videos. This can be used for anything at all. So what exactly does it do? Well, you create basically starter templates for folder structures, files that you want inside there. Could be Photoshop files, could be, you know, sort of any kind of file type you want, Final Cut Pro, anything. And then you can just literally open it up. So if I just use my keyboard shortcut and I'll do post haste, I've created a setup which is dedicated to my videos. You can see there's my FCXP, which should be FPX, mm -hmm. video template, 
Augur Motion Graphics template, and you can create as many of these templates as you want. And inside there, you can see I've got the project number, which automatically increments the client. I can put whatever data I want in here. The thing that I'm actually more interested in is the project name and the date. So I can literally just double click inside there, set the project name, which will be the name of the video, or could be the name of your website, whatever project you're working on. I can click on Create Project, and that will then automatically create the entire structure for me. So let me open up my Explorer, and let me just show you exactly what I'm talking about. So we come into my drive where I've got the projects that I'm working on. You can see product demos inside there. You can see there's all the different product demos. Probably some of these you may have seen the videos on. And for example, if we come into the 12 daily tools, which is the folder that I've just created for this very project. If I open that up inside there, you can see there's my Final Cut profile named for me based upon the name that I've given this. Inside the production documents, I've got an RTF file, which is the text file named exactly what I've just called this particular project. If I come into the thumbnail artwork, there's my thumbnail ready for me to start working in Infinity Photo, named exactly what I've set this project to be. You kind of get what I'm coming from? If I come into my video files, inside there, I've got all the folders that I want to create. So it automatically names all of these things based upon the name you give it when you set up post haste and you create a new project. It is incredibly simple. I would highly recommend you check out the link in the description because it is deceptively powerful. Check it out. That's post haste. Highly, highly recommended and totally free. Next on the list is a recent acquisition, but immediately made it into my daily use toolkit, and that is InstaWP. Now, I grabbed this on AppSumo when it was on there, but this isn't a lifetime deal. This is something that I pay every single year for. This is basically a very, very quick way of spinning up copies of WordPress with a server setup, SSL, everything all in place. And it generally takes just a couple of seconds to do. The best thing is though, I can create templates. So if I want to have starter templates that have maybe WooCommerce installed, maybe a specific theme, anything I want, I can set templates up. I can have these online then for seven days, or I can actually lock them to use them as long as I want. This is great if you want to spin things up for a client, you want to test things out before you run things out. And when you're ready, you can either just delete it, let it delete itself after seven days, or you can go ahead and you can migrate using one of the services that's integrated into InstaWP, and then migrate that site you've been developing over to the live server. It's very, very useful. So let me just quickly show you the back end. And inside here, you can see I've already got a ton of sites. Some of these are only going to last for a certain amount of time. Some of them are reserved, so they're locked until I choose to delete them or I unreserve them. This just basically means I put them back onto you know, the seven-day kind of deletion period. You can see I can add tags. It tells me the disk usage. And if I want to, I can simply go ahead, log in. I can click and view the site itself. And if I want to spin up a new site, it is literally as simple as clicking Add New. You can see I can choose what WordPress version I want. I can go right the way back. So if I wanted to test something from old versions, I can do just that. I can choose what version of PHP I want to use right the way up to 8.1. So I can test things out there. I can create custom configurations. You can see I've got a default one. I've got a bleeding edge one, which uses beta versions of WordPress. And if I want to, I can give it a name and then I can set it as a temporary file or temporary site or as a reserved site. Once I've done that, I can either start from a template, if I've created a template, like I said, with a dedicated theme, plugins, whatever setup I want, or I can just use a basic starting point. If I click on Create Site, and I'll leave this run in real time, I click on Create Site, that now goes ahead, sets that site up for me, gives it a name if I haven't given it a name already, and as you can see, we're pretty much nearly there already. So I've been talking for a couple of seconds, and as you can see, we're at 64%. And there we go, job done. So probably 10 seconds, maybe 15 at a push, and I literally have a copy of WordPress. I can click on auto login, that'll take me over to the site, log me into the dashboard with a fully working version of WordPress, ready for me to do whatever I want. And there we go, you can see, simple as that, you couldn't get much easier. And like I say, the benefit of this is I can very quickly and easily run things up. If I want to get rid of this, I can click on it and I can just say I want to delete it. But you can see I've got, I can migrate it, I can export it, I've got various different tools for database editing, I can view the logs, code editor if I want to edit files inside anything in that WordPress install. I can clone it, I can access it via FTP, and I can map a domain to it if I wanted to. Or let's just go ahead and just click on delete and get rid of that. So we say, yep, let's delete it and gone. Simple as that. Very, very useful. I would highly recommend grabbing this if you have a need to test sites out regularly. You just need to spin up WordPress very quickly, or you may be working on client sites and you want to develop things 
on an environment like this, where it's very quick and easy to spin things up without taking up space on your actual main servers. Check out InstaWP, it is fantastic. Next on my list is Affinity Photo, and you could say the entire Affinity Suite, but we'll concentrate on Photo because I think this is more useful for most of us web design type people. Affinity Photo is a great alternative to Photoshop that comes in at a fraction of the price. Speaking of prices, let's take a quick look. If we have a look, you can see whether you want Mac or Windows, it's $47.99 and you paid it once. You don't pay that monthly, that's a one-time fee. So basically, if you compare this to Photoshop, which you have to pay around £10 or $10 per month, five months, and you basically got that paid for, and it's yours then for the entire lifetime of that version of the software. How cool is that? And the fact that if you need more, you can go ahead and grab Affinity Designer, Affinity Publisher, and Affinity Photo for about 150 quid, 150 dollars, and you have an incredibly powerful suite of tools that can do pretty much everything Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign can do, or enough for most users, unless you're a power user, at which point you may need to have those Adobe tools. But for me, I've dumped Adobe 100%, and I'm all in on the Affinity suite of tools. Plus the fact you can grab the iPad tools for Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer, and they are incredibly powerful and not particularly expensive. About 18 pound, probably about $20. How cool is that? So check out Affinity Photo. Actually, check out the full Affinity suite, because I think you may be surprised. Download them, check those 30 day demos out, and see what you think. Now, next on our list is Pixelmator Pro. Unfortunately, this is a Mac only app. So if you're not on a Mac, you're kind of a little bit SOL. However, if you are on a Mac and you don't want to use the Affinity suite of tools or you just want something to augment it, I would recommend checking out Pixelmator Pro. Why? Because the machine learning, the image background removal, and the fact you can work with vector and bitmap images all inside the one tool, and it's very, very quick, make it very interesting. The other thing, if you are a Mac user and you maybe have an iPhone, you have your Photos app where all of your photos are automatically uploaded. This integrates directly into your photo apps. So if you want to, you can simply go ahead and open that up and you're quick and easy and you can edit your images directly from the Photos app. It is incredibly useful. Let me just quickly show you some of the things you can do inside this app. So I've gone ahead and opened up an image. This is Bob, for anybody that doesn't know. This is our fictitious UI UX designer. That's the feature of my Figma to WordPress course, which is coming out very, very soon. So let's just say I want to remove the background on Bob. All I need to do is come up to the background removal tool, click on it, let that go ahead, check everything out, and there we go. <laughs> you see how quick that was. Pretty much perfect. Might need a tiny, tiny little bit of touching up to make sure everything's perfect, but that was really, really quick. You've also got an abundance of options to enhance your images, and you've got machine learning directly built into Pixelmator Pro. So for example, if I say ML Enhance, I can click on that, and that will then use machine learning to look at the image and enhance it the way it thinks is going to improve it the best. You don't have to use that, but it's a good, quick, and easy way of doing it. You can also disable it. Everything is totally non-destructive. You may only want to use machine learning for your white balance. Well, click on the ML button under white balance, and your white balance is corrected. You may want to do this on your human saturation. Click it, it's corrected. You kind of get where I'm coming from with this. You've got full access to layers like you would with Photoshop. You've got full access to a ton of different editing options. And it is very, very responsive. Super quick and easy to work with. And I'm using this on a base level M1 Mac. Eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gig hard drive. It's the base model Mac mini. And it flies through editing on here. So you don't need a high spec machine to get the best out of Pixelmator Pro. So if you're looking for a great graphic and vector design tool, check it out if you're on a Mac. Now, when I canceled my Adobe subscription about 18 months ago, one of the tools that I missed the most was Adobe Acrobat for working with PDFs. However, recently I've come across Nitro PDF, which is available for the Mac and the PC. And this is a very, very powerful PDF tool. It may not have everything you have inside Acrobat. However, a lot of users don't need all of those features. However, let's take a quick look at what you do have with this and the pricing on this, because when you can compare it to the pricing of Acrobat, which is insanely expensive if you want to buy it. This is very, very cheap in comparison. So if we've got the plans and pricing, you can see you've got Nitro PDF and it's $158.99. That's it, per user, one-time license. That, that's all you pay. 
Compare that to what you pay for Adobe Acrobat, which I believe is probably about five times as much as that, maybe 10 times as much as that. I go with this every day of the week. It's incredibly powerful, available for the Mac and the PC, and integrates perfectly into your design and operating setup. So check out Nitro PDF. I think it could be one of those things that you are pleasantly surprised with. Now, if you're a content creator of any sort, whether you're working with clients, you're creating websites, you're creating documentation, PDFs, graphic design, branding, anything at all, you'll know that having access to good quality assets is vitally important. And this is why for the last couple of years, I've been paying for Invato Elements. And every tool that I talk about in this is something that I personally pay for and use every single day. None of these are sponsored in the slightest. So Envato Elements, well, I don't use this for the web design side of things, you know, as in themes and plugins. I do use it for a lot of other things, things like stock images, things like video templates, things like sound effects and music, mockups, 3D models. You want it, it's pretty much on here. There's an abundance of options. Let's go and search for something like YouTube and see what I'm talking about. So you can see there's 41,000 results inside video templates, music, stock video, graphic templates, graphics, photos, add-ons, fonts, WordPress websites, sound effects, web templates, presentation templates, CMS templates, 3D. <laughs> you kind of, there's, a, there's something you should be able to find something in there if nothing else. And then if you want to, let's just say, for example, we want something to do with photos, we can click on see more. And inside there, we can now see more photographs. We can filter these down based upon the colors. We may want something that's got blue to keep into a certain kind of brand color. We may want to have a person in there and we may want to make sure this is a landscape image. And there we go. We've now got an abundance of images inside there that fit into exactly that criteria with that color evident inside it. And as you can see, there's five pages of photographs that fit into that criteria. You want graphics, presentation templates, if you're working with you know PowerPoint or anything like that, you've got things inside you. And the plans are very, very reasonable. As you can see, individual plans starts from 14 euros 50 per month. And if you are using images and video and graphics and things on a regular basis like I do, that's nothing. You can pass that off in a single simple job for an advert for a client and make probably 10 times that every single month. So check out Invato Elements if you want to get access to an abundance of great quality resources for your design and for your work. Now, speaking of images and files and all those kinds of assets, you need to have a way of being able to organize these and find what you want when you need it. If you saw the video I released this week on Eagle, you'll see what my new favorite tool for doing just that is. If you want asset management in any way, you need to check out Eagle. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because I will link the video that I did the other day in the description below so you can check that out and get a real feel for this. But the overwhelming response for this when I put the video up was, my God, where has this been all my life? Or I've been using this for years and I absolutely love it. So this allows you to very easily and visually organize your assets, whether that's photos, images, illustrations, videos, links, PDF documents, Word, the list just goes on. And if you scroll through, you'll see that we can take a look at some of the options. And again, like we just saw with Envato Elements, you can filter things based upon color. So you can search your library for specific colors. You can rate things, you can link URLs inside there motion design, you can create concept art inside you, you can tag things, you can all, it's just a powerhouse of being able to organize your media in one simple centralized location. And the best thing is, if you use this with another tool that I'm gonna show you next, you can connect this up to a cloud platform and everything you place inside your library will be synchronized to that cloud library. And then you can share that about all of your computers that you have access to using Eagle exactly what I do. So if I'm in the studio, I'm in the office, in the house, I'm in anywhere with my laptop, I've got Eagle installed on there, I've got that connected up to my cloud account, and I can access all of those assets in seconds. Absolutely love Eagle and using that in combination with the tool we're going to take a look at next. Check out Eagle, link in the description below. So the next tool I want to talk about is P Cloud. 
Now I moved over to pCloud a little while back away from Dropbox and basically this is cloud storage. I grabbed the two terabyte storage plan. It's a lifetime offer or was a lifetime offer. I grabbed that and I now use that in the same way that you probably use Dropbox. You have an account you set up, you install everything onto your computers and then you can drag and drop files into it, synchronize it directly with your pCloud account. If you want encryption, you can set things like that up in there. And like I just said, if you're using a tool like Eagle, I literally have my Eagle account connected up and storing all of my media information inside my pCloud account and then I use that storage across all of my devices using Eagle and everything is connected up. I absolutely love this and if you want to share files, you want to share links, folders, make it downloadable, make it just viewable, whatever you want to do when it comes to cloud storage, pCloud allows you to do that. So if you're looking for an alternative to something like Dropbox, check out pCloud. I will highly recommend it plus the fact it works flawlessly when you want to use WP Vivid Backup as a storage location, it's integrated into the pro version. Unfortunately, it's not the free version, it is the pro version, but it integrates directly into that and you can then connect that up and have that every time you do a backup and update whatever, it pushes the backup over to your pCloud account and everything is synchronized up. Absolutely love pCloud, use it every single day for so many different use cases. And now with Eagle, it makes it even more useful and powerful in my workflow. Check it out for yourself. Now next on my list is a tool that I use for so many different use cases from my course creation and payment, the payment gateway, my learning platform and so many other things. What is it? It's Thrivecart. Now this is not particularly cheap, but they do have a lifetime offer that's Let's be honest about it, it's been running for an awful long time. But if you have a need for a platform like this to handle your online payments, your upsells, your downsells, all those kinds of things, and you may even want to have a learning platform which you can integrate with a tool like Bunny CDN or anywhere you want to store your files, I would recommend checking this out. So let me show you quickly what it looks like on the checkout and show you how easy that is to get set up. So if we come over, this is the checkout page. I've set everything up, this is connected up to my payment processors which I have more than one, which is the nice thing about this. You can literally design this any way you want. You can then use it as it is, have a set of link, or you can actually embed this. So if you use something like Elementor or Gutenberg or something, you can directly integrate this into your site design. You can build this in any way you want. This will handle the payment. It'll handle the payment processing. It'll handle the whole billing process everything and then I can connect that up to the various different sources to send out emails, connect it up to the Learn platform, directly integrate this so when someone buys something on here, if it's a course, they're automatically enrolled. There's so many different things you can do with this and it is very, very powerful. Dave Foy again put me onto this and I haven't looked back. This is the core of my education and training business all built inside Thrivecard. The other thing that's beautiful about it is they recently released Learn and Learn Plus, which is a learning platform directly integrated into Thrivecard. So this is the course that I'm currently working on, which is my Figma to WordPress. And as you can see, this is the course structure or part of it. So if you've ever created any kind of learning modules, this is going to be very, very familiar. So for example, if we come into this, what is Figma and click on edit it, you can see inside there, this and now allows me to go ahead and embed videos. You can see there's my course structure down the left hand side. I can drag and drop any of these items in. So for example, I want to add a new divider in. I can simply drag that down into my design, drop it. Boom, there's my divider. I can come in now. I can customize that. I can change the colors. There's everything you want to do is inside you. You see, if I want to integrate a video, I can simply click on the video and then I can just drop in the embed code. I'm using Bunny CDN for this. Drop that in. I can customize the look and feel of it. And this seamlessly integrates into the whole payment side of things. And this then connects up seamlessly with Thrivecart's payment process inside of things. So I can create the checkout. I can connect it up. So when someone buys it, it automatically enrolls them in the course, does everything I need to once payment is completed. I can drip content out. I can take multiple payments if I want to break it down over several months. So many different things. So if you have a need for it, I would highly recommend checking out Thrivecart. It is super powerful. Now, in combination with Thrivecart and from the same people that own Thrivecart is ConvertBox. Now, they bought this a couple of years ago. And basically what this is, it allows me to use pop ups, banners, all those kinds of things on any site that I want. And I can limit it to the pages, all those kinds of things. I can track everything. And you may be thinking, well, I could do that in a tool like Elementor. I could have a dedicated plugin to do it. And you absolutely could. 
But why I prefer using a tool like ConvertBox is everything is in one location. I want to make a tweak. I could be using this on client sites. I could be using it on landing pages all over the place. I don't want to go and log into those sites to make a change to them. I don't even want to use Elementor in a lot of these sites. So this gives me total freedom. So let me just quickly log in and show you exactly what kind of info you get inside here. So when you log in, this is what you get. This is the overview. You can see I can break things down into various different groupings. So Figma to WordPress, the client lifecycle, WP Test General, and so on. And if I come in, I'll open one of these up. Inside there, it shows all of the different pop-ups, the types of pop-ups, whether they're scheduled, they're active, those kinds of things. And I can come in and I can just click, and I want to open up and edit one of these. I click on Edit. This allows me to fully edit everything about it, and I can have multi-step, I can ask Q&As. I don't have to have a simple pop-up. They can be step-based pop-ups. They can have timers in their HTML code. And one of the things that makes this so useful is you can actually connect a lot of the data that's created in your Thrivecart checkout over to this and vice versa. So you could send, if someone subscribed to this, you could then send them over to the payment and the data they put inside there could automatically be pre-populated inside Thrivecart itself. And that's just some of the simple basic things you can do. You can then come in, you can choose where you want to display this. You can see, how do I want to do it? When someone clicks a link, time on a page, the usual things you'd expect to see from a pop-up. You've also then choose exactly where this is included and excluded if you just put on a site. So you can see I can include it and exclude this. This is includes, excludes, whatever rules you want to set up inside there. And then you can go ahead and launch it. And you can create as many of these as you want. You can also come in and take a look at the statistics. So for example, if we open up this WP Tuts one, let's come down to, for example, the pre-launch checklist. We can come in, take a look at the stats. And inside there, you can see this gives me the statistics for the views, the interactions, how many leads it's generated, all the statistical information underneath it in the last 30 days. Or you can come in, you can say custom period, however long you want. You know, there's an abundance of statistical information inside you. So that's ConvertBox. Again, another one of those tools that I would highly recommend because I don't like the reliance upon using page builders next because when that changes, it becomes a pain. With this, I simply put a bit of code in any site or landing page I want to use, and then everything is controlled from a centralized location that makes changing things, adding things, updating, editing, deleting, whatever, painless. Next up, we've got CleanShot X for the Mac. Now, unfortunately, this is a Mac-only app, so if you're not on the Mac, you could probably skip this one, use the timestamps below. However, what exactly does this do? Well, it does a lot of things, to be honest. It allows you to very quickly and easily screenshot. You can grab a screen, but it's nice because it does things like it allows you to grab the screen without the background, without the wallpaper. It'll close the icons down on your desktop if you want to grab something. You can grab video. You can grab so many different things. So if we come up to the top and click, you can see I can capture the area. I can capture full screen, capture window, a scrolling capture to capture everything. Self-timer, OCR, record the screen, hide the icons. There's an abundance of different options inside you. I use this every day when I'm grabbing various different screenshots and sharing them. So let's go ahead and grab a screenshot. Let's say I want to capture an area, and you can create shortcuts for this, keyboard shortcuts. So I say I want to grab this, and I want to send this over to my designer, shall we say. You can see this now opens it up. I can copy it so it doesn't save it anyway. If I want to, I can create a cloud account as part of CleanShot X and upload these and then share them via the cloud account. By double clicking, it opens it up. And now I've got all these annotation tools at the top. So if you've ever seen where I've posted things on social media and I may have an arrow pointing to something, I just do it inside you because it's so quick. I want to put an arrow in there, I'll click an arrow. There we go, we can put an arrow. I want to create step-by-step -step because I'm doing a tutorial. I click on the counter and I say, there's the first step, there's the second step, there's the third step. There's the fourth step. Now I can just go ahead and I can click Save As or I can click Done, and then I can choose whether I want to copy it or save it. And as you can see, there's an abundance of other tools. I also use this to do very quick screen recording. So when I'm creating content like you're seeing right now, and there's little snippets of B-roll of me doing something, I'm literally just using this because I don't want to capture audio. I'm using this, I'm screen capturing it, I'm recording that screen, and then I can just save that, and I can just use that in a B-roll folder that I've created through Post Haste, and then I can just dump that into Final Cut Pro, put it where I want, edit it, cut it, do whatever I need to do with it. So again, like I say, if you are working with a Mac, I would highly recommend CleanShot X. Now I did say stick around to the end because I have a bonus app I want to show you. This is one I've come across very, very recently in the last few days. It's called XNapper. Now this is very similar to CleanShot X in some ways, but also very, very different. Let me just quickly show you. 
So we're going to have the talk, we're going to go to the shortcut, we're going to click on it, and again, you can create keyboard shortcuts if you want to. I'm simply going to go ahead there, choose take a screenshot, and I'm going to just go and grab a screenshot of this header. Now once I've done that, you can see we've got a very similar window to what we just saw with CleanShot X. However, we have a lot of control over this. This has taken the screenshot, but you can see it's put its own custom background in, it's put a drop shadow, and it's just basically made it look really, really smart. We can also go ahead and customize all of this. So for example, I can adjust the padding, which is just the space around that. So you may have noticed when I'm doing uh, sort of social media posts and posting things on Facebook and so on, they're looking like this now when I'm grabbing bits and pieces. And that's because this is just awesome. So I can adjust the padding around it, just give me breathing space around. We can set the inset, which will kind of give us more space inside that screenshot. So it'll grab whatever color there is in the background and expand it automatically. I don't need to do anything. I can adjust the border radius, I may want to have this fully square, I may want to make it nice and really, really round. I can adjust the shadow on there, I can get rid of the shadow completely. I can adjust the balance, I can change the background, I can set it to the background that I've got on my desktop, or I can change it to any other. I can even go ahead and get rid of it completely so I can just have a transparent background. I can use custom and I can create my own custom, plain colors, gradients, image files. I can go ahead and I can choose ratios if I want to. So if I know I want to post this to Twitter, I can click on Twitter and I can choose what ratio I want. So for example, we'll choose that and boom, that's now going to scale perfectly for Twitter. And you see all the different options on it. If you've got email addresses, you can click redact email addresses and it'll automatically kind of redact those and those cover them in a black area. You can show a watermark if you want to and you can say what watermark you want so you can make sure nobody steals it. And you can save these as presets and you see we can create as many presets as we want. Super useful tool. If we come into more, you can see we can copy the original or we can save it. There's just such a cool little application. Unfortunately, it is Mac only, but if you're a Mac user, it is absolutely invaluable if you share stuff on social media or you create training content tutorials and things. Absolutely love this little application. And there we go. There's 13 applications that I use every single day. What are your applications of choice? What are you using every day? Let me know in the comment section down below so I can check some of those out. As always, I would welcome your feedback from the tools that I've covered in this video. Let me know your thoughts. As always, all the links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tets, and until next time, take care.